Hello! I'm Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter. Welcome to another Pastel Month tutorial. I've started off by taping down my Canson XL dry mixed media paper to a just a um, 9 by 12 artboard. I really like to use these canvas panels to tape my uh, pastel paper down to because it's just really easy to handle it without smearing and they're very inexpensive and easy to find and also I keep them wrapped in plastic so that way I can use it for painting later so I don't ruin anything. This paper is very affordable. I'll be using it for my pastel month tutorials and I get mine on Blick because the price is the best so um, you can also look in like local shops to see if they have it too. I paid about five dollars for that 40 sheet 9 by 12 pad and uh, I want to keep Supplies as simple as possible, and I figured using the same paper for all these would be good. So the painting that we're going to do today is actually a still life, and there is a pitcher, pears, and another little um, vessel on a like a teal bench, and the background is black. You could work on black paper if you had it, um, but I want to use this, like I mentioned, to keep things um, pretty uniform. Um, and I want to do a two-tone background, so I'm putting some tape down at an angle. I'm going to do above the angle black and then I'll remove the tape and do the bottom um, teal. Actually, no, I'm going to do the teal first because I, the way that I have it taped off, it's going to work better. I'm going to use pan pastels for the background, but you could also just scribble your pastel. If you don't have pan pastels, what you can do is just take a pastel stick and go on the side like that. Um, but if you have pan pastels, this is a really fun way to use them. So when you apply pan pastels, you have these little tools. They're called soft tools. And um, I'm seeing if I have a clean one. I don't think I have a real clean one. But you clean them off just by wiping them on a paper towel or scrap paper. And I got some scrap paper down on my table. I'm just going to wipe that off as good as I can. And then you can get little socks that go over it. And if you buy a set of pan pastels, it comes with some. So I'm going to pick up some of this teal color and I'll just go right over the color I already put and try to spread that out a little bit. But I basically just want to apply some color. Another thing you can use is a sponge. So for a big area like this actually a sponge is a good idea. Um, this one already has that color on it so I'm just going to use that right there and then you can apply a thin layer that way. Now the nice thing about having pan pastels is that they're not dusty. I'm just going to work up some of that stick pastel that I put down earlier and mix it in. And um, you don't have to get your fingers dirty if you don't want to. So I mean you can use the applicators using the sponge you're not really touching the pastel. It just gives you a nice a nice finish. And you look you can see the grain from that pastel stick I used and there's like no grain from the pan pastel I used. So I need to blend that in. It's uh, it's a little grainy so what I'm going to do is take that stick that I started with. I'm just going to do an even application just so I can just so I can blend it out. Now you may be thinking oh I like those sponges but I have stick pastels can I use them together? You can. They're going to work better with the pan pastels because the pan pastels are eyeshadow soft and in fact, I recommend if you're curious about pan pastels, but you're not ready to make the financial commitment to buy them, that you can actually use um, in an expensive set of eyeshadow to uh, to see how you like it. The like even if I use these tools with the stick pastels, I don't get quite as soft an application though. So it's just down to the fact that the the pan pastels are a bit softer, and they just uh, they don't catch the grain of the paper as well because you don't have that hard stick to. Uh, to deal with and I think you waste a little bit more with the stick pastels so I mean even though each pan pastel is I don't know what they're charging now probably around seven dollars it is kind of pricey you do get uh, a pretty good bang for your buck I think I'm just wiping off the extra there and I hate to waste that but that's gonna waste where if I just went with the pan pastels I wouldn't have so much waste you know what I mean I just wipe that off on my paper over there to clean it up a little bit. And you can wash those um, those sticks, uh, those sponges rather, right in water. Right in your right in your sink when you need to. I usually just wipe them off and then when they get real grody then I'll wash them. So what I'm going to do now is stick this over and it's not going to stick too well so I'm going to try to wipe off some of the, the end there and I'm just going to stick that on top and then I'm going to do the top half with black. Okay? And I think I've got a sponge that's got a little black on it that's probably due for a washing. If you do a lot of black backgrounds, don't wash it. Just leave it the way it is and then um, 
and you don't have to worry about it. Now, when you buy an individual pan pastel, you will get a um, you'll get a pan and a cover. So actually, I'm going to move this because I'm getting black dust all over my white, and I can just kind of gently blow the dust away. I generally don't recommend blowing the dust, but just to get it off that white panel. Ooh, and I'm getting some on the teal. I'm just going to tap it off. So there we go. There's all kinds of papers you can use, and you may find you get better results on some rather than others. Sanded, true sanded paper is probably my favorite to use, but it's very expensive. And that's why I'm using the sand grain. It's like an imitation sanded paper. It's just a kind of a pebbly textured paper because it would give me um, uh, that texture without, or some of the texture without being cost prohibitive for beginners. And I think if you're not too precious about your supplies, you're more likely to create more. Now, if that's not dark enough for you, it is a little bit streaky on this paper. You could use black paper, like I mentioned before, or you could even go over it with a pastel stick and see if you can get a little bit more of an intense color. This will usually leave a little bit more of a grainy appearance just because um, uh, the harder stick catches the grain of the paper. Now I'm just going to blend it in with my soft tool sponge here. And that's actually giving me a really nice dark. Now I like doing um, still life as subjects. I also like florals, I like food. Um, I guess they're all kind of still life subjects, uh, but I am trying to do a variety of things for pastel months, so you can kind of try out a bunch of different motifs and see what you like best. Now if you want, you can spray this layer to fix all this color down and work on top of it, but I'm just going to go right ahead and, and work over it. Um, but if you ever get to a situation where you can't get the uh, get the paper to hold any more product, then just go ahead and spray it. I'm going to remove my tape there, and now tape I will just throw away, and I'm just going to tap off extra and take a look at what I have. I'm going to go tap this right into my trash can too, just to get any excess. Off. Now I do have a little bit of a messy edge right there, but I'm not going to worry about that yet because um, we'll be adding objects and whatnot, and then um, it, you know, probably going to mess it up even more. So I'm just going to wait till the end to clean things up. It's good to have a baby wipe or a wet rag handy so that you can wipe your hands off in between colors, and you can usually use the same rag for an entire painting, a same baby wipe for the entire painting. So it's not too wasteful. And if you really wanted to, you could rinse it out and use it again. So. Um, so do whatever works best for you. So the next thing we're going to do is move on to stick pastels. So I'm just going to set this aside. And if you're not familiar with pan pastels, um, you can get these palettes where you can keep them. And I really like to use these because I feel like it keeps them um, protected, but it's also great because I can just set this down and I can use from all these colors. And I have a video on recommended supplies. So if you're just getting started, um, I recommend this painting set because it's got all the colors that you, and you can mix all the colors from these colors. These mix a little bit more like paint versus using stick pastels when you're doing more um, like just leaving a brush, uh, a, you know, a pastel stroke and mixing kind of um, optically. So, hey, it's everybody likes different things. So I'm trying to give a good representation of what's available. Now generally I'll wait to the end to put white in, but because we have a, a white picture, I'm actually going to sketch that white picture in with a white pastel. And this, you can use whatever pastels you have. This is a Paul Rubens and I'm, you know, getting set to review this product. So I wanted to use it for a few, uh, for a couple different, uh, different projects. So I'm going to start with a circle for the kind of the belly of the vase here, this picture. I always start smaller and then I let it get fatter as need be at the foot of the picture. Try not to let that diagonal line um, mess you up. <laughs> then we're going to go up like this. And then we've got the, uh, the picture part. And get the handle. And 
All right, so we have all this pigment inside the vase, and this is a white vase. So what I'm going to do at this point is actually get a kneaded eraser and um, and try to remove some of that. Now, this one, actually, I might need to get a new kneaded eraser. This one's feeling awfully awfully tired and dried up, but we'll see what we can, what we can accomplish here. Yeah, I'm going to get a fresh one because that one is really used up. Well, not really a fresh one, but... It's I should say fresher one. That one's pretty old. That one is toast. They, these will last out a little bit longer if you keep them in a um, in a sealed container or in a baggie. But they eventually do get clogged and you have to get rid of them. And I'm sure that one was, since that was in my pastel blending bin, it probably got a little bit... Um, a little bit more more used up you know the more the more dust it takes in the more it's you know that's just gonna wear it out a little bit more if you use just use it for pencil you're probably not gonna use it up too much now if you want you could trace the reference photo onto your paper and then when you apply it you could avoid applying so much in this area where you're going to be erasing so that's an option as well you can do whatever you want to do. I like that you can even actually draw with this a little bit. I'm going to turn this upside down. And when I turn it upside down, it helps me check for symmetry. The thing I like about this still life, this reference photo, is that um, is that there's a lot of things overlapping. So if something's not perfectly symmetrical, you're not really going to notice it that much. Now to use this, you really just press and lift, but because this is so much pastel to remove, I am kind of cheating a little bit and just kind of wiping there. I think that's gonna be all right. And don't worry about messy smudges on the outside of the shape because um, we can go in and touch things up. We can spray things with fixative and go in and touch things up later if we need to. And then just clean this, just stretch it a few times and you'll be good. There, look, nice and clean. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna put in is a couple of pears. I'm gonna use this kind of ochre color. And I wanna sketch all these elements in so I don't end up putting in more, uh, more product than I need to. Actually, I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit. I've just got one pair here, got another pair here. And we've got a little pot over here. Mm, actually, I don't think I even need to remove the blue in there. I think it'll blend, blend in and be fine. And then we've got a piece of fabric that's kind of draped over. the side of the hmm it's the oh I think the, actually you know what the uh, the the picture is sitting on the fabric so since this is a lighter color it's not, I think that's fine. It's not too too different in value. It's not like I'm going on black. I'm just going to leave that like that. Okay, now I am going to go in with the white, but I am I'm going to not color over where the pears are. I'm going to go around them. Now this sand grain paper, this is one of those kind of like it's kind of a bit of a jack of all trades paper of dry media, but it's it may not be the best paper that you come across for your style of working. I really like this a lot for oil pastels, and I really like it for colored pencils, and I like it okay for soft pastels. So, um, 
you know, you may find that you prefer a, a true sanded paper. You probably will. A true sanded paper or a pastel mat are very fine papers and they're wonderful to work on. They're pricey. Uh, you may prefer a Canson Mitant paper, which is also a really nice paper. It's not that expensive. It's, um, it's more expensive per sheet than this, but definitely a good paper as well. And it has a rough side and a smooth side, so it gives you a little bit of a versatility there too. Um, and it comes in uh, lots of different colors. I don't know how many are out of the top of my head, but probably, probably 40 colors. It comes in a lot. Uh, so that's another option. But just keeping it simple for the sake of my uh, YouTube tutorials here, I'm just using this. I'm going to go ahead and blend this with my finger. The reason I'm going to do my finger here instead of an applicator is because I will remove less material if I use my finger. Now I left, I didn't color the white all the way into the center of the pot because I wanted to have a little shading there. I'm like, that'll just make it easier, easier to do that. I will have some kind of almost chiaroscuro shading going on here. Some really dramatic shading on this side of the vase, but I'm just going to, I might have to erase back for that. But for right now, I'm just going to try to fill in the tooth here, get a nice solid white. I'll be able to sharpen those edges later when I go in with a uh, stick pastel after I've got most of the other stuff colored and blended. Okay, I'm going to tap this. Okay, um, I'm going to go right in with that black because we already have some of the black in there. And I am going to give a little more shadow in here. And don't be scared because the white's really strong, so it's not going to get too dark on us. And I want to go, actually I might as well just go right off the edge because I need to get that neatened up. And then, oh yeah, there's like a little, um, little ridge there. Shadow under the... This, the uh, handle too. Let me get that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and color in this first flat area with the black and then I'll blend that out and we'll have another shadow there. Very subtle one here. It's a little sloppy, don't worry. You can always get white to, to go back in and shadow around the pears too. white. I want to get the shape here good. Oh, 
Get a weird twist in my look of my vase there, or the look of the handle. But I don't really like. I also haven't decided how how realistic I want it to look versus versus impressionistic. So maybe I should kind of stop here at this at this level of detail and then see and see what I want in the future. So I'm gonna go back. This was the color we drew the pots, but we can have some of the some of that red on the pears. And then this would be kind of the highlight of the pot here. The pot looks like a pomegranate. It's a pomegranate pot. He's all in the wrong spot. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and use black for the shadow on the side of that. Because I've already used it, so it's not like I'm... It's going to be out of, out of place. Actually use a little bit of black there and on the other pair. Move back to this more rusty color. Let me get a little bit of an ochre color in there. I think I need something with a little more yellow in it. That's not really vibrant enough. That's better. I have a lot of just loose wayward dust. I'm going to tap that off. And for this scrap paper, I just wipe it down with like whatever rag I was using to clean my fingers. Throughout the process, I just wipe down the, the paper with it and it just kind of tones it. And then uh, it'll keep it from getting on my, onto my next project. But it also saves me from having to change that paper every day, which would be kind of wasteful. So um, I try to uh, I try to keep things... As uh, I like to balance the convenience and um, I guess uh, wastefulness. And this was actually a scrap pad that I had. Uh, somebody had given me a big calendar that I couldn't use. I didn't have room for it. So I'm like, well, this will be good. I'll use the back side of that for, um, for protecting my work surface. So it was something I couldn't use. I got use for it. I actually gave up using baby wipes for a long time. Um, so now I only use it if it's something that's really like, well, almost like it would waste more materials cleaning up afterwards, like paper towels and um, water and stuff like that. So that's kind of how I, how I gauge whether I'm going to use them or not. All right. I'm um, not really that crazy about the shape of this guy. So actually I'll turn it, I'm going to turn it sideways. Oh, you know what? That red, that claw should be coming in front of it, so... There's also a shadow next to this going off the edge. 
going to go ahead and put that in because, and then I've got a really pretty bounced reflection on there that I want to show. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and put, that's a shadow from the picture here. And then you get a shadow, I think, from the rag there. Shadows can be kind of messy to put in, so I'm like, might as well get them in right now. There is some like slats on the table, but I don't I think I'm gonna leave those out because I feel like this is getting kind of um crowded and complex as it is, so I don't want to add more complexity at this point, especially if I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm going to keep it kind of loose, so it's something I can get done in a relatively short amount of time for a tutorial. When I want to do something more complex, I'll tend to putter on it a little bit. And think about it a little bit more and not talk through it. <laughs> If you're in my critique club, you know I go silent sometimes when I'm working on those more complex projects. I drag some of that up here into the shadow. I can drag some of that into the, uh, pick some of it up and bring it into the shadow on the uh, fabric as well. that off. Now there's a really pretty um, bounced highlight in here. So it's bouncing off the the uh, the table and it's just going up onto that pot. Isn't that pretty? So I want to put that in there. Let's get that out too. Also if I want to clean up Ooh, that's a little bit lighter. Actually, that's not the color I used, is it? Is it? Really? Oh, you know what? We used Pan Pastel and we mixed a couple of colors, so that worked out really well for that reflection, but it's a little too light to fill in there. All right. Now, I dropped this pastel on the floor. That's not good. <laughs> Luckily, it didn't break. Um, I think I'm going to work on this guy here. This cloth. So I keep my pastels for the most part. This, these are still in the box because I'm working on a review. But then when I'm done and I'm ready to, if they pass the test, then the pastels will go into my pastel drawers because this is much easier for me to work from. It does take up a lot more space than a set of pastels, but the fact that I can get just the right color that I need makes it so. Um, I don't have to blend so much, and if you like to have you, like your strokes really visible, um, you want to avoid you want to avoid blending as much as possible, and just kind of let those strokes stay there. Kind of use an economy of um, of strokes. But if you don't have that many colors, it's um, it's really hard to do that. But it's not realistic, also, to start off with you know a hundred pastels. That's why I recommend the, the Faber-Castell set that's pretty affordable because you get 72 colors and it's 30 bucks or so and a decent quality. I'm not sure. That's not where, where it needs to be, but at least I've got a good, a good layer of that down. All right, what I think I'm gonna do now is start working on this side and work my way over so that way I don't put my hand in anything. And uh, I'm gonna start with this kind of beige color and I'm gonna very carefully try to put the ellipse on this pot here. I might see if this pastel pencil will help me out a little bit. Pastel pencils are harder than the, the uh, stick pastels, so it's going to scrape away quite a bit, but I might be able to just kind of 
like so I can get that shading on the inside. I might be able to like almost sketch it out enough here that I could just go in with a little highlight with a stick pastel afterwards and get it did all right. Now the tough thing is not to rest your hand because I'm tempted to want to rest my hand to steady it. But um, you could use an artist bridge, or you can just kind of like prop your prop your hand up on your on your um, prop your wrist up on your hand and work that way a bit. And of course, if you get to a point where you you just can't lay anything down, you can do a little fixative. I would recommend the Krylon workable fixative for that because it's quite affordable. All right, so the value of the center there, I think that's good. That's dark enough. Um, and I'm going to see if I can just put like a little bit of highlight on the edges so that I don't have to do much more. And I think that works out all right. Uh, now I want to do a little bit of a... a highlight on the jar itself. So I'm going to use a little bit of that color just to knock back the white a bit and then I'll go in with the white and add a more strong highlight there. And I think we'll go back, also go back here and put a little, little smidgen there. And honestly, I think that's about all I want to do here. Now on this fabric, I think want to add a little more structure than it has. And I think I could probably do that with the white and then go in and add shadows and not blend it too much. So again, working my way over I also want to build some different lines. I've got circles. I've got a lot of circles, so I want to get more of a crinkly texture. I don't really have a brown in this set because the other Paul Rubin set was really heavy on the brown, so I'm going to have to grab a brown from my drawers, my drawers, my pastel drawers. I think this is actually might have been a Paul Rubin's one here. Yeah, I think so. The Paul Rubin's feel very much like the Sennelier. So they're a great alternative if the Sennelier's are more expensive. And it, it really, on Amazon, it varies. Sometimes, lately, the Sennelier's have been a great price, even cheaper per stick than, than Paul Rubens, but I wouldn't count on that lasting. So I would say they're pretty equivalent. Go with, go with whatever you like. And I want to get a really dark brown. This one, I think, how heavy it is, I think it's a Renaissance. I only have a few of those. But they were, they were heavier. Uh, a little bit harder, but still decently pigmented. I've never seen them for sale around here. I uh, distributor sent me some because she was thinking about shopping, uh, carrying it in her shop with the watercolors. They were a little hard for my liking, but I have to say, I mean, they, they are pigmented. They are laying down the pigment. They are putting some crinkles in there. I kind of like that. Uh... Let's see now. Actually, you know what? I like that pastel. I think I'm going to use that on the uh, the pairs of it too. But I think I want to work on this a little bit. Now I've got a little bit of reflection from this bouncing back onto this. So I want to get that in there. And... Get a little bit. I'm gonna go with the gray actually. I've got just a. I just want a hint. It's a bad habit to blow your pastel dust. Don't do it. Sometimes I can't help myself. And I want to go in with this black. You can work pastels on an easel. And then, and if you have a French easel or an easel, you can tip forward towards you where the dust can just fall down without smearing across your work, that's that's ideal. A French easel is a very affordable way to get an easel that will do that because um, they typically will tip forward 
and they're much cheaper than like a studio easel that has that same feature so um i don't know if i'll do any of my tutorials at the easel but if you're just painting in your house and you're not trying to film it then that's a really good solution that's how i used to work before i did youtube and of course teaching a class it's much easier to be teaching when you have an easel if you're you know in front of a student but if you're filming this is a little bit easier. Uh, I want there's a pretty strong shadow in here coming from the side. I'm gonna go in with this gray and try to make sense of this weird handle I have going on there. I'm going to blend here with this gray. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's this up here that's making my thing look twisted. Maybe. Feels like it should be connecting over there a little bit more. And this should also be a little bit darker in here, I think, because it's really charoscuro, kind of like fading. The shadows fade into black. That's what that means. It's a technique you'd see in a lot of, um, uh, a lot of, um, Baroque art, some Renaissance art. You'd see this just strong, strong shadow. Rembrandt was a master of charoscuro, Caravaggio. Beautiful technique, beautiful realistic technique is super dramatic. Yeah, look up Caravaggio, you'll see those beautiful shadows. A great art history resource is the Sister Wendy series. It used to be on PBS, but it's on YouTube too. And uh, just wonderful, wonderful series. Sister Wendy was uh, so witty and uh, charming. Just a beautiful, beautiful series. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to clean my hands, and then when we come back, I'm going to finish this up. Moving on to our pears here. I'm going to start off with a shadow. Um, I am going to go in with kind of a dark rust color. This is one of the Paul Rubens from the, um, the portrait set that came out a few months ago. So they came out with a set that was mostly neutrals and it was beautiful, but not as versatile as the assorted set. So I'd recommend the assorted set if you were considering these. Uh, but again, also double check what Sennelier has on offer on Amazon because they've had some really great sales and um, the, the prices have been the same for the 40 set. So I just wanted to mention that because although I think the quality is almost identical, I think that with um, that with Sennelier, because you can just, you know, if you use up a color, you can buy that stick. And the fact that they've got, um, well, they probably have ping information for these, I think, online. I'll have to double check. But just the fact they've been around longer and you can get, like, open stock and uh, you can find them from most online art supply retailers pretty easily. I would give them a little bit of an edge, but... Um, as far as how they feel to, to work with, they're very, very similar. Well, I like this color. It's kind of like a pretty, uh, pretty coral color. Oh, if you hear any noises, my son just showed up. He still has some stuff at home to move into his apartment. So for those of you following the saga, my empty nest saga, 
on my channel. Uh, you're probably like, what is this lady talking about her kids for? <laughs> you get it all here, friends. It's a box of chocolates. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think I'm going to use my finger and just kind of tap down the dust. I do that sometimes just so I don't waste it and I can get that, that saturation. Now, of course, the different papers are going to accept pastel a little differently. You may have filled the tooth long ago. You may not even be close to filling the tooth. So just kind of use that as a guide. I don't mind seeing little bits of the blue speckle through just because it's um, it's uh, opposite of orange. And I think it gives it a nice vibrancy. And I think it's kind of it's kind of nice looking. Um, I want a yellow ochre that's a little bit more like um, a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going with this one. This, I think, feels like a schminka. I also want to put a little bit of that up there, I think. And I can hear, I can hear Jack playing with the dog. Mm, also going to get a little bit of a reflected highlight over on that side too. I'll probably need to blend this in a little bit. I might even do a little bit of this, um, this, I think this is the Paul Rubens here. I'm going to blend this one. Use this one to blend out the brighter yellow ochre, which actually seemed a little bit too light when I was putting it in there. Hmm, I like that texture. I think that works really nice. And also I like this color and I'm going to like harmonize by putting some of that into the into the um, the fabric as well. I think I need to put these right into my my regular setup because I really I really like this assortment. I, it's gonna work really it's working really nicely with what I already have. And just keep in mind you build your pastel stash up over time. I like how this is painterly and I just kind of dab it with my fingers. I'm getting that kind of um, mixing there. Now something you can do with a harder pastel. I think I showed that to you earlier, but um, like I'm going to take a new pastel, which is a, it's like a Conte crayon. It's very hard. It's made by Prismacolor. They're not super expensive. They're, you know, they're like, obviously they've, they've gone, gone up in price over the years. But the nice thing about this is that uh, it's great color selection, um, very vibrant. And I can go in and I can kind of blend with this because it's harder and it will, it'll put down some color, but it'll also smoosh around what I already have. And I want to get some of this in here too. I think that's such a nice, such a nice color, especially if I can blend some of those uh, reds in with it. I like these ones I committed to having this a little bit less realistic, a little bit more painterly. I really had a fun time with doing those strokes. I'm going to go in with a darker new pastel. I honestly prefer the new pastels to pastel pencils, uh, but everyone's different so you may it's it's not one's better than the other it's just whatever you prefer I like the new pastels because I can get a pretty good line as, as detailed of a line as I want for the most part but then I've got the um I've got the option of being able to um I've got the option of being able to lay down a fair amount as well. I'm going to go in a little bit of black there. And I could use a new pastel here too. There. Let's see if there's anything else I need to sharpen up. Your black pastel is going to be darker. Even if you're using black paper, your black pastel is generally going to even be darker than that. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to take the my black pastel here that I, sh I just sharpened actually, but I even don't sharpen it to a, a point. I just whittle off the wood because they tend to break. So I'm going to use a, a black Conte. You can also use a dark brown. Put the stem in on this pair. 
and also the one over here on this pair and then just kind of uh, I need to sharpen up a dark shadow anywhere I can go in and do that with this and use one of these little foam applicators to smooth the line if I need to Sometimes I just like to throw in a few little strokes just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a little bit of texture, a little bit of a painterly line. And I'm going to throw in the white highlights here. A little bit of a reflected highlight there from the vase. A one from the napkin. And from the vase up here, Just scribble off the dirt. Add some highlights to this. to connect that in a little bit so it seems a little bit more uh, straight on. I want to give kind of a brighter area in a couple of these places just for a little texture should be bright right here on the cloth uh, maybe a little bit of dark in there maybe let's do that see if I can do that with the contour without it getting too dark I think that might be okay. And some of those folds. Oop. I'm just going to use a soft black there. There we go. All right, I'm going to call this one done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will clean up my workspace before I take the tape off the edges just so I don't get it all smudgy while I'm handling it. But um, I will have the reference photo linked down below so you can open that up on your screen, make it big. Sometimes it's easier to watch it, watch a tutorial through and then, um, you know, print out the reference photo or open it up on one screen, like divide your screen on your computer, have the video playing and then have the reference photo larger. And then you can um, it kind of go through it again when you're creating the artwork. It can make it make a little more sense. But um, if you have any trouble as you're going through this and you can't layer up, then just stop what you're doing, grab some fixative, or if you don't have fixative, some aerosol hairspray. If I'm gonna use hairspray, I'll use Aquanet, the cheapest, cheapest hairspray I can find, because those tend not to have the oils and silicones the more expensive hairsprays have. So either super, super cheap hairspray or like a Krylon workable fixative. It's important if you're buying a fixative, you go with workable so that you can layer up on top and then um, spray it, let it dry, and then carry on from there. Um, but definitely use what you have, adapt, adapt what you have to, um, uh, to follow these tutorials. And uh, if you see something that looks really great that you think, gee, I think I'd like to add that into my stash, make a note of it. And then when the time comes that, you know, you can afford to add on, then do it at that time. Um, but nobody starts off with everything. Everybody builds their collection slowly over time so that they can get the products that are really going to suit them. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. And until next time, happy crafting.